Hi, I'm Bonnie, and we're back for another member interview. Uh, this has been a really fun series. I've been doing this uh, uh, for a while, and I'm asking the same questions, but I get such completely different responses from everybody. So it's been really fun for me to get to know people a little bit more. And today we have Aristides Bampakos. Did I say it right? Yeah. Hello. Uh, Hi. Yes. Your, your, uh, the pronunciation of my name, uh, it's a bit difficult, but you did it great. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. And you let us call you Aris because it's easy. Yeah. Uh, Especially for, so, for, for people that are not Greek. So, yeah. Okay. So, uh, will you tell us a little bit about yourself, Aris? Yes. Uh, I'm from uh, Greece, I'm particularly from Athens. Uh, and I work as a front-end web developer at a company called Plexer. Uh, I am also organizing uh, the Angular Athens meetup here in Athens. With Katarina. I, work as a, yeah, I love Katarina. And you have another yeah. co-organizer too? Yes, Katarina, Stefanos, and uh, Lena. And there is also another team that uh, they are assist organizers, so they can help us That's during so awesome. the organization. Yeah. And uh, I also work as a, as a contractor in a a private institute, educational institute called Code Hub, where I teach mm -hmm. Angular to other individuals and developers. And finally, I'm also the author of, the, uh, of a book, Learning Angular Third Edition, which is now available and, to buy for everyone. And mine is in the mail, and I'm excited about it. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I have a couple. <laughs> So, uh, okay, so let's start at the beginning. Uh, how did you get into programming and did you ever think that you, when you started out, that you weren't cut out as a developer? I always ask that because I did go through that. Um, I, I was really hard when I started. How, how, did your, how did your process start? How did your experience start as a developer? Right, yeah. Uh, uh, I, I didn't study, uh, I, I didn't study computer development or computer science or any related stuff. Um, I studied in uh, UK, in the UK university, uh, engineering mostly, computer engineering. And then when I went back to Greece, uh, I would like to, uh, I wanted to do uh, my practical exercise for my, must, uh, for my master's degree. So I went to a company and uh, they allowed me to develop uh, stuff with Java. And then the, uh, there was the, my first steps towards uh, software development. How did you feel about it? Was it fun? Was it hard? Was it initially? I, I yeah. Initially, I, I didn't want to go to generally to um, to work with uh, computers. Okay, uh, but my father insisted to go to uh, England, to United Kingdom, and uh, learn about that. And I think he was right. Yeah, yeah, now I feel great. I think I made. I think I made the right the right choice after all. Yeah. And what? I what so, what was it that changed along the way that you decided that you liked it? It just grew on you over time. Uh, no, at that time when I started the programming, uh, software development was a, a sector that uh, had a huge boom. You know, it has. A, it was starting to emerge. It was about uh, two thousand two, two thousand three. And uh, there were a lot of uh, languages come up, a lot of frameworks. You know, the whole industry was moving uh, continuously. So uh, it, there was a lot of stuff to do. Yeah, yeah. It's really good when people pay you for it. <laughs> <laughs> that comes in handy. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, was there anyone along the way uh, that really made a difference for you in your journey? Was there anyone who helped you in your family or your career or in the community? Uh, initially, my father, because he insisted to go to uh, study about computers. Uh, and then um, John Papa was a mentor to me, uh, not only for, his, uh, for the things that he says and teaches, but also for his attitude in certain things. And uh, the style this guide. Is, yeah, this is, this is where I started uh, working with Angular seriously, Angular JS from his style guide. So after working with his style guide, then I moved more to the open source community and to the software development and especially Angela. John Papa's awesome. And the style yeah. guide, I really leaned on that a lot. And because I think a lot of people really needed that direction, like where, how do we, how do we 
organize our files and it was just all laid out do it like this and and he put a lot of thought into it and it was really good and i'm glad that that ended up being adopted into the angular docs it was awesome and he's such a good guy he's fun okay yeah uh, he's awesome yeah he is uh what do you listen to when you code do you have a programming playlist i prefer to listen to uh jazz um and uh, you know lounge music when i that when i am coding so i have some i have some youtube channels in my is playlist. that is jazz popular in greece or is that just an rs thing no it's just an rs thing That's there's not the, there is there's no such a popular uh, <laughs> type of music that you can listen here in greece <laughs> except for our traditional music but i wouldn't recommend it for coding but jazz but, uh, you know that's so uh, fun Jazz and the lounge uh, feels uh, to me like uh, I can concentrate more when I listen to that. And I don't listen to the music. I listen to the code, if you know that's what I mean. That's very cool. Okay, and that's a perfect segue into our next question. Uh, do you have any strategies to help you focus on days that you're just not feeling it or if you're working on something tedious or difficult? What do you do to help you get through those days? Right. Uh, I prefer to go to a walk, for a walk. Uh, most of the times, 99.9% .9 when I face a problem in coding and I go for a walk, not for a long walk, you know, for just five minutes, maybe to go to the basement of my house and uh, look for something. Then during the walk, I find the solution that I was looking for. So. Um, I'm trying to get uh, get out of my office when uh, I have uh, a problem. Also, the the, the exercise uh, helps me a lot because you know, when you exercise your body, you actually exercise your brain. So you can find some things easily. I really agree with that, but it took me years to figure it out. Because when I was younger, I would just sit there long, like it, the more I couldn't figure it out, the longer I would sit at my desk and it was just getting worse and worse. And I had to learn to like get up and take a break. And then I come back and then, oh, I know how to do this. But it was especially when I'm tired. And so, yeah, I think that comes with uh, experience or at least for me, it did. Um, you know, it's difficult okay. to leave your desk, especially uh, junior developers don't want to leave yeah. the desk. They just want to solve the problem now. But yeah. Because this is it's about like confidence and I feel, and especially if I'm, if I'm, if I'm not, you know, admitting that I'm having a problem or that I need help and I'm just stuck on something and, I, and it's taking longer than it should. And I would just get more and more stressed out and I'd write more and more code. And it was just like, oh, and then I'd finally just give up and I come back the next morning and it's like five lines. It's done. It was not even a hard task, <laughs> but I was just so like in my own head. So, but yeah, it takes time to figure that out. It, it took time for me to figure it out. Okay, uh, I really like the going for a walk. It's 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 so nice, fresh air. Uh, what is your experience with Angular? How did you get into Angular? When did you get into Angular? Right, uh, when I started, I was a .NET uh, framework developer. I didn't have any relation with Angular, but uh, in the company that I, that I worked for, they asked me to to start a project uh, to create a web application. So I started researching uh, through JavaScript frameworks. Mm -hmm. I started looking, working with Backbone JS, but then uh, by accident, someone in my team uh, threw the word Angular. Not the, the, he didn't say Angular, he said something about NG. And then I thought, no, I should check this out. And from that day on, I have never used another framework in my life. I have fell in love with Angular. Uh, I started with Angular JS, um, and uh, when I started to look to work with the Angular JS style guide of John Papa, it was then that uh, my interest to Angular grow grow larger. It was larger. Uh, now I'm a co-organizer of the Angular Athens Meetup. Uh, I have written uh, several uh, articles about in the medium in my medium blog about Angular. And uh, uh, that's all, yeah. I have, I have written my book, which is called Learning Angular Third Edition. So 
what and what, you just what had this your debut on Angular Air talking yes. about uh, what was that Electron? You were talking about Electron. Electron, yeah, yeah, Electron, yeah. yeah. And you ran out of time because we asked you so many questions. So you're going to have to come back on Angular Air soon uh, <laughs> yeah. to do a second episode. And because there was a little bit more that you wanted to show us and that we wanted to see, but we were running out of time. So yeah, <laughs> that's fun. Yeah, but uh, I, I, okay. I use I now use Angular uh, every day in my in my in my work experience, and I'm also very active in the open source community of Angular. And what are you doing in the open source? Uh, I'm contributing. Book, but... Yeah, I'm contributing to uh, some uh, Angular-based projects. For example, there is a what you see, what you get editor that I'm a, a main contributor. And but mainly, I contribute to the Angular Docs. So you know Angular Dave Shevitz. I don't know him in person, but I would like to meet him if he listens. Oh, you have I, I would to, like meet to meet Dave you. Shevitz, Aris. He is the most fun. You're going to love this guy. I'm going to introduce you. You have to talk to So you've been contributing to the Angular Docs already? Yeah, yeah. I, I started contributing even before it was merged in the Angular repository. Because previously, when it was Angular version 2, there was a separate repository for the docs. And yeah. it was it was uh, mainly, uh, uh, mainly maintained by John Papa and... Uh, how yeah, in Angular JS when it first came out, the docs were a little not as awesome as what we have now. So I'm very grateful. We have so many uh, learning resources and and uh, courses and tutorials. It's it's. I remember oh. back in the day when we had to walk uphill both ways in the snow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You should definitely meet Dave. You'll like him a lot. He's super fun, and he's in charge of the Angular docs now. And so he'll he'll want to meet you, and I'll introduce you. He's a fun guy. Sure, that would be great. Thank you very much. I know, yeah. I know, Kapunahel. Oh yeah, I love thing. her yeah. too. Oh, she's so fun. Yeah, yeah. she's really great. Great, yeah. Right. Okay. Um, what is your favorite thing to work on? What do you really like to nerd out over? Uh, I really love to work on open source. Not uh, I, I. I really love to work on open source more than my job. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. But you know, I in the me in during my journey with Angular, I noticed that I really love open source because I want to help other developers to resolve their issues, find uh, help them find uh, face their problems that they have in their code. So uh, this is what I would like to do most, also in the future. You're so great. Well, it's, I'm glad that we're doing this uh, interview so that people can get to know you a little bit more. And, and uh, because this is the thing is, I think the reason why I started this series is like, I want people to know who everybody is because we're so disconnected with this whole, you know, global pandemic thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next question. What do you struggle with? Is there anything that you really don't like or something that you're not good at? Or what is it that's that you like kind of dread that you have to do sometimes? Um. Now that I, I'm writing my second book, I have a, a big problem with uh, that I don't, uh, I procrastinate a lot. I mean that I don't devote time sometimes to, uh, to write every day. Because when you write a job, when you write, sorry, when you write a book, you have to write once, uh, one or two hours per day. If you don't do this and you write, uh, two times per week, then you will lose your motivation. And when you will go to start to continue from where you have uh, left it, you will be in very big trouble. So yeah. this is this is my main struggle that I, I prefer to do other things sometimes. Uh, for example, uh, playing Assassin's Creed, because this is my favorite. If you can check this out from my flag to be kind. Yeah, but uh, I, I try to to keep to keep the writing pace uh, constantly so that I don't uh, I don't leave it behind. Well, you released your book, so you must be doing something right. <laughs> Thanks very much. Yeah, uh, it, to write a book, uh, it seems now it seems to me very simple, but it is very difficult. I mean, you have to devote a lot of time, a lot of time. 
it's very yeah. very if you if you have other things to do then you need to leave it and uh, concentrate on your book but if you love something as i love angular then it, it, it you make it to look single angular loves you too rs Okay, uh, how do you define job satisfaction as a developer? Um, if I want, to, if we want to define job satisfaction uh, for my, for in my case, I would uh, point to the company that I work for, which is Plex Earth. This is the main reason that uh, I have progress so far in the Angular community and generally in the open source, because. Uh, when uh, when you have um, one or two hours per day in your job to work to something that uh, really that you really love, for example, as I love to make open source contributions, then uh, this is more satisfactory than the money that you take. Wow. Because in in this case, you have to maintain a balance between your personal uh, interests and the interest of the job. If the company leaves you space for your personal achievement, then that would be great. I mean, this is a perfect for me, the perfect case. So they actually budget time for you to work on open source and projects in the Angular community? Uh, what do you say? What do you mean about budget? Like they they have time set aside for you and you're working and then you're doing like others they're they're supportive of what you're doing in the community. Yes, they are very they are very supportive, but they don't you know. Sometimes you have to earn some things. Okay, if you make your job well, then the company that you work for will understand this, will uh, support this, and he will they will give you the time to for your personal achievement. For your personal, uh, because at the end of the day, if I succeed, then the company that I work for will succeed. This is what I always try to explain to people in the in the architecture course a lot, and and when I'm talking to people in the community who are not like we, they see you know people up on the meetups and conference stages and on Angular Air and everything that they you know all these there's these GDEs that we've been seeing for a long time, right? But uh, I try to encourage, especially when I when I find team leads and architects who are leading their companies in Angular, uh, that I want them to get more involved in the in the community and start speaking at meetups and you know doing stuff like that and putting out material. And it it takes time to prepare a meetup talk, and I think that's why so I think some things because public speaking is terrifying, right? But also because it takes the time that you have to put into it to prepare a meetup talk. But what I've found, at least in my own experience, and pretty consistently for the other GDEs as well, is that the more you participate in the community, the more you interact with these people and you collaborate and you learn and you talk and you then you, you have friends that are working on things and you can call them when you get stuck. It directly benefits your actual job. And so that's, I think, the thing that I didn't realize how much it would benefit me. You know, I was kind of looking for somebody to help me and I was looking for a mentor. But once I started getting more involved in the community, it really did make me a better developer so much. So it really goes both ways. Yeah, yeah, I, I, tot I totally agree with you. This is also I, my my motive, you know, my, my motto. Absolutely, I agree with you 100%. So your company is super supportive of that. It sounds like a great place to work. Are they hiring right now? Uh, we already hired an Angular developer. So the, the, right. I currently, there, is, there, is, there isn't any job opening. Yeah. That's okay because to have a developer who's so passionate about Angular, who's actually in a company that he's happy in, that's a pretty high compliment. Yeah, I, I can assure you that I have uh, turned down many large offers. From that's amazing. Large companies here in Greece. All right. Well, hats there. off to Plex Earth. That's pretty cool. Okay. Last question. What are you working on now? What does the future hold for Aris? Right now, I'm currently working on my second book, which will be called Angular Projects. And each chapter will contain a different project on how to create, it will, cre it will be a different project with Angular. For example, you want to create uh, an, a blog with uh, Scully and Angular. There will be a chapter for this. You want to create a progressive web app uh, for the weather with Angular, there will be a chapter for this. So each chapter will be a different project. 
Except from that, uh, I'm now setting up and configuring the Angular Athens meetup channel in uh, the Angular Nation uh, because we want to we want to push it further in the community. So we think that uh, Angular Nation is a big chance for us to to promote the job that we do here in the Athens meetup. So currently, I'm setting and configuring this to be ready to accept uh, our members. And so you asked me a really good question the other day because your meetups are not in English, right? Or some of them or none of them? Some of them are in English, some of them in Greek. And you know, so inside, there is a, the, inside the channel will be English and Greek, whatever people want to speak, right? Yeah, you know, uh, Greek people, Greek developers are not very um, comfortable with English. Yeah. For example, well, when, we, when we that's have awesome. a guest for an English, uh, when we have a guest and we'll talk and we'll make a talk in English, we don't have so many people in the talk as we do with Greek speakers. And I think it is reasonable because, you know, uh, not all developers are comfortable with English. They want to do it in their own native language. That it's is why especially I ask difficult you. learning Angular and learning English at the same time. I've heard that a lot. Yeah, I, I, I didn't. I, I haven't think of it to learn English and Angular together. I mean, you know, yeah. sometimes we take some things for granted. For example, I take. I think that all people know English, but this is not the case. Yeah. Not at You're all. Right. And even if you do know English, some of those, I mean, some of the tutorials are getting kind of advanced. And so if you have access to tutorials, or especially if you can ask questions in your own native language to someone who speaks your own native language, it's like, yes, this is one of the reasons why I've been, I've been like so encouraging. Like we have a Portuguese channel, we have a Hindi channel. And so I want people to like be able to, you know, as long as we have a host who's willing to help, who's an expert like you, which is why we can do stuff like that. I think it's great. You know, and there is also another question that uh, uh, another question that I have with uh, the all with the language thing. Mm -hmm. I have seen that many uh, libraries, Angular libraries, uh, have uh, their documentation in different languages. And I'm thinking, how uh, should we benefit if we maintain a Greek version, for example, of the Angular.io? I mean, you can't really translate good the English text to Greek and maintain also the technical uh, the technical uh, issues, if you know what I mean. I think that as the leader of the Angular Athens group, that this is such a good conversation for you to, because you're not the only one who's having this experience. And so the more you, and this is, you have to meet Dave Shevitz, who's in charge of the mm -hmm. Angular docs, because he's such a great guy. And he's really looking to the community for help with stuff like this, because he's just one guy, right? And he has Kapuna Hale, but they can't do it all. And so they're really so supportive of, they like they want that, um, you know, access to the community, which is why I started Angular Nation, because I'm just trying to make this a place where people can go. And so mm -hmm. if anyone's interested in this channel, it's free. It's free to join Angular Nation. It's free to join this channel. And it was it will always be free, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Always free, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you uh, know go ahead. But I okay, but uh, one last question. But I, I don't see any do you see any benefit if you translate? The Angular.io in, uh, in in Netherlands, for example, in the language that they speak in Netherlands. Can, I, I mean, I got very lucky in the Netherlands because almost all the Dutch people speak English because they learn right. it in school, and they also speak German and French, I think. So yeah, they're, that's different because we're spoiled because they're you know it's it's we pretty much take it for granted. But there are a lot of countries where they don't learn English in school, uh, so but it is an issue you... for a lot of people. Can you transfer uh, the translation exactly as it's supposed to be? For This is the problem, you know. There are some, uh, I believe there are some translations of, uh, there's like, tra I, I mean, I use Google Translate a lot, but when you get into technical stuff, it's really difficult. 
So I know that there have been other uh, GDEs that are that are helping in the community. So basically, we find somebody in that native language. And if you can try to autom like, ideally, if you have an automatic translation service, that would be the best thing because you don't want somebody to have to go through and do it manually. But uh, then even if the even if you had an automatic service, you would want to have a native speaker go through and review it and probably discuss and, and just to clean yeah. it up because otherwise it'll get confusing. Because I know, like, I just use Google Translate because I'm still learning uh, uh, ik Nederlands ik, ik uh, I'm trying to learn Dutch. And uh, sometimes the, the translations are a little wonky. So I think it would still take a native speaker. But I think it would be really great to uh, have that discussion because it's it's there's so many other people that in other languages that this going is going on with. So I'm going to introduce you to Dave Shevitz and you're going to love him. He's Thanks. a nice guy. Try, try, to, try to translate dependency injection in Greek. Oh, man. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's no such a word. There's no such a translation. Yeah. Well, we have to start having these conversations more. I think it's going to be uh, it's going to be really helpful. He's going to love you. And I think that the Angular community and especially the Greek Angular community is very lucky to have you. I think you're awesome. And I haven't known you very long, but I'm really glad that we crossed paths. So I thank Jeffrey Bosch over the Dutch Angular group because I, uh, I saw you on the Dutch Angular group and, and talked to you. And I think you're really cool. And please tell Katarina that I said hello because I love Katarina. And thank you so much for doing this. I hope to talk to you again soon and often. And I am going to uh, let you know as soon as your book arrives in my mailbox. Thanks very much for this opportunity, Bonnie. I really enjoy it. And it was a pleasure to talk about uh, how I would get started and also about Angular. It was fun. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.